Thank you for joining me again today. My name is Victoria Rose and I am known for being a DAG and I revel in that opportunity to be a DAG. I love bling, I love colours and I do love the idea of mastering the joy of living. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hmm, not much joy of living happening in the lockdown, in self-isolation, Victoria. Well, I beg to differ. I mean, have you seen those families who are doing their singing, their miming, their dance routines? I'm thinking it's kind of cute. And I love the way I see us as humans showing humanity. I love the way I see people genuinely giving to others. I mean, genuinely doing that, not having to take your credit card, <laughs> even though it's only cost, going to cost you one dollar this course for 14 days. <laughs> but we all find our way to live. And my question to you today is, how are you finding your way to live and give, to master the joy of living. Now, as baby boomers, we might think, oh, that's all I've done all my life, Victoria. I've given, I've given all the time. And yes, you may have done. There is a certain satisfaction in giving though, wouldn't you agree? I remember every Christmas, I would sit and just watch my children opening their Christmas presents because that gave me the joy of living. So what is it that gives you the joy of living? Now again, as baby boomers, one of the problems we have, not all of us, but so many, enough for it to be documented and to be a trend, is that we find it difficult to receive and that's all part of my story today thank you for joining me again and thank you replay viewers i changed the timing to 11 a.m a-e-s-t and let's see how that goes mind you it's not like a lot of you are dashing off somewhere who knows how long before we're able to actually do that. So, before I get into what season five, episode two of the Live Life show is all about, I need to ask you again, what is it that you are doing that's giving you that joy of living? And what I suggest that for many of us, not all, but many of us, is actually the fact that we can give. That giving may be to ourselves, to ourselves, self-care. This self-isolation, especially if you're an introvert, may just be the perfect thing. Bring it on, I want more. <laughs> then and again, perhaps, not difficult to comment on how the world is now don't you think it's intriguing though that it is the world going through this i would suggest it's the first time ever that the world has been united if you're just joining me thank you so much for checking out my the live life show it's all about a living life. My name is Victoria Rose, and I finally decided to embrace that I am an elder entrepreneur. And I'm kind of guessing that you might be too. Having those ideas, those 
thoughts around how you can live your life better and make life better for others. Today, I would like to share with you number one, the fine mess I found myself in, number two, the four words that calm me down, and number three, I can't count, number three, the magic that happened. And if nothing else, today is a good news story and it's about really making a decision. And you do have a choice. The only thing you have control over, it would seem, <laughs> There's no control over a packet of Tim Tams, but that's another story. The only thing that you have absolute and complete control over is your mind. How you set your mind and how is your mindset? Let's dive into point number one, the fine mess I'm in. I launched into international house sitting and volunteering when I did my 16 month epic trek through 10 countries, Europe, Turkey and Asia. Thankfully, my timing was perfect. I started out in August 2018 and came back in December 2019 before it all hit the fan. Thank goodness. Now, the only reason why I could fulfill my mission of proving it is possible to travel and live overseas, let me just turn around, um, on an Australian age pension was because I was able to uh, not pay for any accommodation or rarely. For instance, I spent three months in Turkey. That was a beautiful surprise, uh, staying in Turkey for that long. And of those three months, I only ended up paying for three nights accommodation. So I'm a kind of lucky gal. I am doing that here because in fairness, we all say how expensive Australia is. I want to show, is that true? Living here without paying for your accommodation how expensive is Australia? Well, it is a struggle <laughs> living on an Australian pension here, but I'm achieving it. Hence, my first point. I had, up right up until mid-November, beginning of December, the whole year filled out with pet sits and house sits and volunteering. Oh, what a grand year I was in for, travelling all along the eastern seaboard of Australia. Enter COVID-19. All of a sudden, all fell in or out, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, which meant that I do not have a home. I'm actually homeless. I cannot home sit, house sit anyone's dwellings because their OS adventures and cruises and all of those things that they planned can no longer happen. Hmm. Who's quite grateful now that they're not caught on a cruise ship? Oh. Me for one. So here, there I was, uh, caught. What am I going to do now? Where will I go? Now, what you may not be aware of is that there are hundreds and hundreds of Australians prior to the coronavirus pandemic who did house sitting and pet sitting either in their local area or Australia wide. You may not be aware of that. And they're all uh, mm, in a fine mess as well. Here's the interesting stats about that though. Many of them are couples Many of them are mainly women, 50 and above, single women, either traveling around with their pet or traveling solo like I am. Many of them do not have transport. So you can live in your car for a short period of time. I've 
done that. Uh, but if you don't have a car and you don't have a roof over your head, uh, it can be awkward. <laughs> so that's the important thing here. That's the fine mess that I have found myself in and so many other older women, Australian women, have found themselves in. They've got nowhere to go. In the various house sitting groups that I belong to and platforms, people are coming up with really, really good schemes. If you want to know more about that, then just ask. Can I thank the replay viewers? I think I did at the beginning. <laughs> Please comment in the comment section, hashtag replay, just so I can see who's catching my live stream, my the Live Life show on replay. So there I am in a, a bit of bother. Now we come to point number two. These are the four words that calm me down. I discovered these four words. You know them prior to leaving for my 16-month epic trek, uh, OS, and got them, can you believe, from uh, the latest Mission Impossible starring Tom Cruise. I like him. I don't care. <laughs> I think he plays that role really well. And here are the four words. I'll figure it out. Now think about those four words for a minute. It's not just about everything is on your shoulders it is about you do have the capability the competence the openness the adaptability the flexibility or whatever be you want it to be but you are acknowledging now that it is within your power to figure it out now that may be just noticing something different, hearing a word in conversation that gives you a clue to possibly an opening in another way, in another direction. All I can say is on my experience, OS, if you've been following my live streams, there are over 43 episodes on my YouTube channel, Victoria Rose Solo Travel, you will see I got into some sticky predicaments. All the time, I calm myself down by saying, I'll figure it out. I don't know how you react to fear, but this is how I react to fear. Closes my vision. Very, very narrowed vision. And that, my friends, that is absolutely not a good way to live life. I get paralyzed by fear. Fear may not affect you like that, but it certainly affects me like that. And crazy as it might seem, as woo-woo as it might seem, when I say to myself, I'll figure it out, that means something to me, calms me down and I have discovered that I do figure it out. So what words do you use? So our words are powerful. We don't, many of us don't give them enough credence to know that how powerful that what we say truly affects us. So I'm telling me, thank you. Uh, I'm telling myself that yes, I will figure it out. And my mind goes, the cells of my body go, okay, we will. <laughs> and we are united. <laughs> There's a whole heap of evidence that supports that. Uh, you're probably already on board with that anyway. So what is the magic that happened? Let me just, oh, actually, talking about magic that happens, here's what I want to do. First of all, I'm going to get rid of that one and I want to show you I am currently at a house sit in Redcliffe and this was originally meant to be a seven week stay. I'm looking after Mr. Bossy Boots, the cat, who bosses me around, demands 
things, certain things happen. He's always hungry. But I really want to share with you what my view is. I'm just going to turn you around to have a little look. Let's have a look. So as you can see, I'm not suffering, but the seven weeks is just, is now only two weeks. And this is where the magic started to happen. I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do after this two weeks? <laughs> so what happened? So this is the first part. The magic happened in two parts. The first part was a wonderful human said to me, some time ago, if ever you're up this way, come and stay. So I connected with her and I said, you know how you invited me up to come and stay? Well, I've just come out of two weeks isolation, in lockdown, in a, on the Gold Coast. I am here in Redcliffe and it's just me and Mr. Bossy Boots the cat. Uh, tell me, is your invitation still open? Well, she said, yes. But, oh, how exciting. <laughs> and this is way deep in the darkest depths of country Victoria, way in the bushland and with all of the birds and the greenery and uh, no threat of bushfires. So that's part one. Then part two happened. This really came out just from out of the blue sky, from being open. What now? I'll figure it out. I like to send birthday wishes and I do that. I do it every day, mostly 98% of the time I send birthday wishes. I had met a wonderful Australian woman when I was in Turkey. Now, we only met up once in cash in Turkey. Now, we meant to meet again. Life got in the way. She was busy building her, what, her life over there and I had to move on. So we actually never got to meet again. We kept in contact on Facebook. I sent her a birthday wish just last week and she asked me how was I and I said well I'm homeless I, all of these house sits and pet sits and volunteering work has fallen through and it's going to be interesting for the rest of the year but I said I'll figure it out she responded, this wonderful human being responded and said, oh, Victoria, I may be able to help you. And I went, oh, really? Hmm, okay, let's do it. So we had a call and I discovered something amazing. She has, so she's in Turkey. She couldn't get here even if she wanted to. So she's there in lockdown and self-isolation with social distancing yada 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 as well and she said I have a fully furnished house in a place called 1770 in Queensland you are welcome to go and stay there what I hadn't even heard of this place called 1770 so, I mean that's a weird name for a place isn't it anyway I said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yes. <gasps> okay. Let's do that. I, I have no clue what this house is like. It's fully furnished. It's a five-minute walk from the beach. It's a tree house. And yes, we've organized it. I am going there for, for what, what, what will that be? Uh, May? May, June, July, and August. Now, in August, I turned 70. My plans are to travel 
back down to the Gold Coast to spend my 70th birthday with my daughter if the restrictions are list, lifted or listed or lifted then, then yeah, I'm kind of hoping that that uh, can happen. But if it can't, I'll be having a live stream 70th birthday. Even if I can use the internet or have uh, coverage there in this magical, mystical place in Northern Queensland called 1717. So there you go, guys. My name is Victoria Rose. I am known for being a dag. My intention is to go live every Thursday, 11 a.m. AEST. And I would like to share my life with you. I have lots of experience to share with you. I've been a leadership trainer in the corporate and business world for over a decade. I did real estate for a decade. Oh my gosh, I've done all that solo traveling. I love live streaming. I can share information around that too for you. And what I truly, truly love above all now is uh, building chatbots. And all chatbots are is it's a conversation, conversational design. So it's a uh, a way to provide superior customer service. And so that's what I, I totally love. I want to bring the humanity back into conversation, the human, the humanity. So I'm working on doing that with my chat box. Thank you so much for watching my show today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please comment, let me know if it was of value to you, even if that value only was that you agree, yes, Victoria, you are a dag. I happily accept that, embrace it, because I am what I am. Actually, you know, it's really funny. Whenever I call people who aren't Australians dags, they go, what is a dag? I say, look it up. They come back and say, oh, fine, thank you so much. You're telling me I'm a bit of a piece of poo on a sheep's bum. I go, well, informally, a dag is what an Australian calls someone they consider a friend, someone who's eccentric, who goes their own way, doesn't necessarily follow all the rules, and who isn't afraid to step out of the uncomfortable comfort zone. Australians never call someone they don't like a dag. We have other names for people we don't like. So for all you dags out there, for all you misfits, let's unite as introverts in our own home. <laughs> I will see you next week. Thank you for joining me. Oh, now, because I'm out, um, I can't actually see what I'm doing, which is a little bit awkward. Bye.